room in my bedroom, actually. Uh, as many of you know, I'm actually moving pretty soon. So yeah, I had to keep that whole other area pretty clean, but you know, seems to be working. As you can see, I have my little uh, painting set up here. So I'll wait for a few more people to get on and then we can get started. I have all of my paints with me. I'll be using my horrendous, uh, what's it called? Paint palette, again. It's getting pretty heavy, actually. It's basically a solid block at this point. Uh, pretty soon. I, it won't even be a palette, it'll just be a, a brick of acrylic. So that should be interesting. I'm just gonna get my paints ready and then we can start. Hey, how are you doing? I am good. So to explain why I was gone, you know, again, is from school. I had my semester ending and all of my final tests were coming up. Pretty stressful-ish, but you know, all the hard work paid off and I did get honors. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, oops. Just trying to get the rest of this brown paint out. It does not want to. All right, so uh, yeah, today I'm gonna be continuing on with this painting. I figured it'd be kind of cool for me to not leave you guys hanging any longer than I needed to, you know, and uh, actually show you guys what I'm doing. Hey everyone who is joining, I did start, jeez, does not want to come out. I'm gonna try to suck up some water into here. I know that's like horrible, but. Oh my gosh. All right, well, that works. Uh, I'm hoping everyone is having a good day. Yeah, all right. So before I actually start painting, you know, I thought I'd be able to get that paint out easier, but and the cap fell off as well. Yeah, I thought that would be a lot smoother of a process. Whatever, I have a little tube that I can use. I thought it would be interesting for me to show you guys some of my first drawings ever, because as we were cleaning the house to move, we actually found an old sketchbook of mine and I thought it'd be cool to show it off. Let's see. I hope you have a nice spot to paint at the new house. I most definitely do. Uh, basically the whole basement is, uh, well, I've claimed it, you know, that's up for debate. It's controversial in my family. They're trying to tell me that, you know, you can't have the entire basement to paint. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I have a nice little area though, um, in the basement. It's pretty convenient actually. And it's bigger than the space I already have. So I will have a little more space to do more ambitious projects. So yeah, before we get started on this, uh, hi everyone. But yeah, so before we get started, I will show you guys some of the first drawings I have ever done. We found this hidden in our, uh, our bins of wonder. This is, I think, from my fifth grade of school. I was really into reading Far Side Gallery comics. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Probably a decent amount of you know what they are. If you haven't, you know, it's, it, they're basically just like really weird, goofy comics from the 90s? I don't know where they're from. They seem older though. Let's see. Uh, one day you'll need your own studio. Yeah, I kind of already have one, but in the new house, I think I will. Uh, so yeah, I'll show you guys these first and then we can get to painting. We can see there might be a little bit of progress in my art. So these are the first, you know, paint or drawings I've ever done. And the first one is this snake. Now, I think this is, again, from my fourth grade. Yeah, there's a snake. I think that's a, the Black Widow spider. I put the little figure eight symbol on the wrong segment of its body. Yeah, whatever. I was figuring it out. Beetles. I, I really like bugs, apparently. I remember I drew scorpions a lot. Yeah. And then I started getting into, like, these weird comics that kind of reflect Far Side Gallery comics. I thought that was kind of interesting. Let's see. Uh, I remember Far Side, but my favorite comic strip of all time is Calvin and Hobbes. Actually, that is probably my favorite comic strip also. Uh, I actually have a few Calvin and Hobbes books with me. Hold on. I have a, a little collection, if you will. You know? I really like them. Ah, they're, they're pretty wholesome-ish. 
for what I think he's supposed to be first grade in that comic. Uh, he has a pretty extensive vocabulary. All right, yeah, I think that's what adds to the humor in it. This is like a butter. I don't know if you guys can see that. A butterfly on a blade of grass. I thought that was kind of cool. You know, a ladybug. Let's see. I'm gonna try to find. It goes on for a while, actually. Hold on. I'm going to find an in a more interesting one. Uh, and then we can get on with the painting. I just thought it'd be interesting to show you guys now because I haven't seen these in actual years. Yeah, this is basically just copied from Farside. It's literally like... It's a... <laughs> it's a caveman fighting like some questionably drawn, proportionate dinosaurs. Like, I don't know. I don't know what was going through my head. This is a monkey stopping at a stoplight in a in a jungle. I was interesting. I was an interesting child. For but for fourth grade, yeah, that's when I first actually started drawing. And now we're here. Yeah. Not too different. You know, I changed the medium a little bit. Uh, are you planning on continuing your art in college or university in the future? I most definitely am, actually. I am hoping to apply for a scholarship soon because when I finished, so I took basically the uh, highest level art classes you can take. So um, art 20 or 10 is, so that's grade 10, 20 and 30, all advanced program. And I got 100% this semester in everything, which is, you know, pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to apply for a scholarship and hopefully I get in. That's pretty exciting. Let's see. Uh, new painting basement fun. Oh, thank you very much, Matthew. I'm glad everyone is here. Let's see. Hey, hey, hello, Stephen. Well, hello. All right, so I'm going to get started on the fox here. Is uh, Hopefully the chat isn't covering it. It is on my screen, but that's also just my screen. Yeah, I think it can move either way. Like, it's in the setting, so I'm just going to start painting a bit. Let's see. You are everywhere. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Matthew Fox, you were everywhere. I just didn't see you on Josh's channel. Oh, I see. Uh, hello from Florida. I finally got the rhino hung up. It's amazing and I love it. Thank you very much. I'm glad you like it. Uh, yeah, that rhino was probably... I think that was my first rhino drawing that I've ever done. So I'm glad you like it. I was pretty proud of it. So with this fox, I have... Actually, I've... Whoops. Well, that's not what I meant to do immediately drop my paintbrush. I have an iPad with me. For a reference photo, I am going to actually use a reference for this one because I want to try to get it as realistic as physically possible. And I usually don't use them, but in this case, I have never drawn a fox before. But Oh, that's a lie. I've drawn a, a fox before, but not like this. I've drawn them in like blue, blue and white. Uh, and, you know, that was cool and all, but it wasn't necessarily as realistic as I like it to be. So, you know, I decided to take a couple screenshots for me to look at, for the colors at least. Um, yeah, alright. So, uh, actually, you know what? I don't think I need it for now. If I feel like I do later, I'll use it, but I should be fine. Right now, I'm just putting in, uh, you know, a very base color and making it streaky and leaving white spaces on purpose because it's immediately, like, created detail, some texture. Uh, yeah, and then I'm going to add layers from there. Let's read some comments. Um, let's see. Oh, what did my mom say? Uh, Matthew Fox, are you sure that the shine on the nose isn't similar? Oh, all right, I see. I missed the whole conversation. Whoops, not trying to do that. Something's going on. There we go. Oh, I see what I did last live feed. Uh, last live feed, I accidentally uh, made my whole, like, you know, picture vivid. I put a filter on. It was really annoying, and I couldn't get it off, but I just realized how I did that. There's a button at the bottom that's kind of hidden. That's not really hidden. I'm just not very observant, apparently. Uh, yeah, and apparently I pressed it. I'm glad I figured it out now, because that would have been pretty annoying for everyone trying to watch the live feed. Yeah. Alright. 
So I'm just gonna add a base layer here. Like I said before, I'm just gonna go out a little further here. I'm probably gonna stop here and work a little bit on the other side so I can give this time to dry. Then I'm gonna start layering it a little more. Uh, and I plan on using uh, basically just orange, brown, and white. And the way I layer it, it essentially makes it look very detailed, even though I'm doing like the same thing everywhere. It's not super complicated. So I actually, yeah, you guys can already see, uh, it looks like it's already almost blending in now, but that's just because of the white space I left. I am going to add detail the second that dries. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna work on this side now. Actually, I'm gonna step around, because that is easier. Let's see what that says. Uh, oh, thank you very much. All right, let's see. Teresa, uh, I, I am trying not to completely butcher your last name, so I will, you know, be as respectful as possible and not try. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, in focus for me too? Let's see. Is it in focus? Uh, hello again, everyone. Uh, and it looks like Zenobia is in the chat. Hello, Zenobia. It has been a while, but now that I have my next semester starting, I no longer have to worry about tests for, you know, at least a week or so. And this gave me the chance to come back on and finally see you guys again. I missed doing these live feeds. It's been a while. I have actually, um, I guess I can, yeah, I can leave this to dry. I have uh, done uh, a pretty ambitious painting recently, and you guys haven't seen it yet. Uh, and I'd like to show it to you. I'm just going to do a little more detail up here, and then I will. It is of a tiger, and I've done a tiger before, a few tigers before. Hold on, let's step back around. And uh, that sound is me trying to get the paint out of my paintbrush so it doesn't harden. That would really suck. I chose to have two paint glasses this time, so I won't have to worry about refilling it. That was kind of annoying last time. All right, so we'll leave this to dry for now. I will show you this one. This is, uh, oops, well, it was kind of out of frame. A tiger painting that I did recently. It should be up for sale soon. I'm pretty happy with it. I think this might be my most detailed painting besides this one, eventually. I'm actually really happy with how this is turning out already. But so far, this is my most detailed painting. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to make a video of it because, uh, you know, as I said before, I had tests going on. There is another video that I'm putting up pretty soon. It's of me sculpting, uh, sculpting that clay dude that I showed before, sculpting and painting, and I might do that in a live feed, actually. Uh, but yeah, pretty exciting. And, you know, I just thought I'd show that to you guys because I was pretty happy with it. Let's see. Uh, what the tiger is gorgeous. Well, I'm glad you think so. I am pretty happy with it. It was nerve-wracking to say the least, trying to, what is the word? Lug that, trying to lug that around school and not drop it. That is, holding paintings and a big box full of paints and carrying it around school is very precarious. It's super, super nerve-wracking. Yeah, it does give me an excuse to uh, march around school. Yeah, look at me, <laughs> I can draw a tiger. Get all the attention. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's um, pretty fun. So I actually, hold on. I brought with me this new white Posca pen and it looks like that paint is dry here. So. I'm gonna use that for the details, uh, for the white fur, anyway. Uh, so what I'm gonna do first though, actually, oh, I have a different brown. I'm gonna go in with brown and then add highlights after that because if you see in here, it looks pretty realistic as long as I don't overdo it. So I have here uh, burnt umber, 
premium quality acrylic paint by Castle Arts. I haven't actually seen these in a while. A lot of my, this is brand new by the way, so I have to actually poke a hole in the top. Uh, a lot of these art supplies I haven't seen in a while. So uh, us, you know, purging our entire house to get it clean for pictures actually, you know, helped me find a bunch of missing things, you know, including the old sketchbooks. Actually, I have this old painting as well that I did. This was first painting, my first watercolor painting. It says first painting class. This was my first watercolor painting that I had ever done. And uh, yeah, I, I guess you could say I come a pretty decent way, you know, I'm pretty happy with it still though. With watercolor, turned out all right. And I believe I was in fifth, sixth grade when I did that. Hmm, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you plan to do something with art as a career? Actually, yes I do. I've been looking into doing animation or a 3D design or something like that for maybe an animation studio or uh, I guess like a digital design thing going on. Like I think it'd be cool to work on, I guess every, every uh, young man's dream is to work on video games. But for me, I think it'd be actually really cool to help design them uh, in a way. Uh, I really do like enjoy creating characters and visually appealing things. So I think that would be a really fun job to have. Oh, and what I'm doing with the back of my brush is instead of you know, waiting for it to dry and, or just, you know, having a normal technique. I actually wipe some of it off because the end here is, it's like exposed wood. It's kind of spongy and it allows me to drag some of the paint over and create this cool, uh, te <clears throat> excuse me, texture. Uh, I think it's kind of, kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I'm a little bit congested today, so I might sound a little nasally. So yeah, just adding where I think the shadows would be. So with each layer of fur, uh, I'm imagining the closer to the face, the shorter the fur, the less layers, but the further it gets away, the more length you'll see in the fur and the more layers I have to create. And with each layer, I try to create a little layer of shadows to separate them so it doesn't all blend together. I mean, I want it to blend together, but I don't want it to all look like one, you know, mess, one big mess. Yeah, that's kind of what I was uh, reaching for. That's kind of the word I was thinking. All right, that should, there's not too much paint in that anymore. Should be fine for me to come in with this Posca paint marker. These are like my favorite paint pens. Let's see, uh, oh, I see, uh, the audit, uh, what's it called? Picture quality was low because it was in the low setting. Yeah, if you think the picture quality is low, I should have it like, um, like I do actually have a new phone, so the camera should be better than usual. But if you think it's low, uh, it might be the internet or, uh, you know, you could go into settings and just turn up the uh, pixel quality or pixel amount. I'm going in like little clumps almost. I want it to look like the hair is a little bit sticking together. Like it's not perfectly soft, smooth fur. It's kind of matted like this. This fox wouldn't have like perfectly groomed hair. Actually, that's a lie. I've seen uh, some pictures of the foxes that I was looking for a reference with like, it looked like it was painted because of how smooth it was. Like almost paintbrush, like brush stroke soft. I chose to go a different direction with it. And I think, I think I chose all right with that, but you know, you guys could let me know if I didn't. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll take the criticism, might cry a little. Here, let's see. I missed a comment, but it's not letting me see it. Let's see. No, it's perfectly clear. All right, let's see. Uh, it's like you're in high definition. Well, I'm glad that is the case because before, with my old phone, I like whenever I rewatched my videos, like it was like really, really pixelated. So I'm glad I decided to get this one. I'm trying to go along with the uh, original brush strokes that I already kind of put in. 
it wouldn't make sense for the hair to be all over the place, like going up, down, every which way. However, I'm also kind of crisscrossing it to make it look like the hair isn't also perfectly in, like it, like it wasn't brushed back by a comb or something like that. I think that would be kind of weird if it did look like that. Eh, maybe not. But personally, I choose not to do that. After this, I think I'm going to also add a layer of yellow. Because I think it might make it look a little brighter. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm glad it helped. Uh, have you spilled the big news yet? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, what was I... What was my big news? Oh, yeah, I forgot to change my description. The big news, I kind of already summed it up, is basically that I'm applying for a scholarship in art uh, because I did actually get, like, the highest mark I could have possibly gotten. So I think that warrants me applying to an art school. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> really draw too much attention to that. I forgot that was the big news. It's, uh, you know, pretty exciting for me, though. I think if it wasn't for YouTube, my art would never be here. If it wasn't for you guys all encouraging me and being here, watching my videos, and leaving all these positive comments, I don't think I would have pursued art. Because, you know, to me, it wasn't really any anything I felt any reason to do. Like, I don't know. I think without having anyone actually tell me that my art was good I never actually thought it was in a way I don't know hmm even even then I think it was just because of the encouragement that helped me decide to pursue art it was everyone telling me you know don't give up on art and I was like okay guess I won't you know my art was nowhere near this you know it looked better in the camera actually in person it looks still a little messy but it was nowhere near this, like, say, even two years ago. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to continue to progress and continue to put out videos more regularly and show you guys kind of my process because I always like coming here and sharing kind of what's going on with you guys. All right, I think I missed. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations from Teresa again. I am still going to be, I'm still going to choose not to completely botch your name. Actually, I, I hope I didn't misread your first name. Hopefully that's not wrong. Uh, I hope you get the scholarship because I can move out of the shed and move into the spare room. Ha! Huh. Yeah. You know what? I, don't, I think um, if I do get a scholarship, I don't know if I'll, if I'll stay in a dorm. They're pretty expensive. Oh, no. Scholarships cover that, right? I don't know. I, I'll apply and then I'll figure it out from there. Hopefully I get it. I think I can. Because uh, I do have a pretty big portfolio. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think I'm ambitious enough. I'm ambitious enough to guilt them into letting me in. I think uh, my strategy is going to be like, to annoy them. I'll send so many emails that they'll just pay me to stop. And I'll count that as the scholarship. Yeah. Yeah, that's my game plan. Don't know why I haven't thought of that before. Genius. That's what that is. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I It definitely needs more brown, that's for sure. Uh, I'm looking at it in the camera. It looks fine, but it looks like... Hmm. It looks like I need a bit more shading here. Also, I think... Yeah, I chose to draw like a really fluffy looking fox. Most of them have kind of like skinny faces and then the fur will point straight up and then come out like that. Uh, I chose not to do that because I thought it'd be fun to make this way harder for me. It kind of looks like a corgi. That's not what I'm going for. So I think what I might actually do after this is reshape its face just a tiny bit to make its jaw look a little sharper. Or not its jaw, but you know, this little area, make it a little sharper. You know, you can tell it's a fox, but it, it looks very dog-like. Something interesting, actually, that I just realized foxes had 
So even though they're a dog, they have those cat looking eyes, like their eyes are kind of pointed like cat eyes. It's kind of weird. Cause like, I didn't, I didn't think dogs had that at all. That's like, no idea. They, they have like cat like eyes, like cat dogs. Yeah, I guess you can either be a cat person, a dog person, but everyone has no excuse not to be a fox person. I really like foxes. They're like the cutest. Really like them indeed. They're, I think uh, at our new property, we do have foxes there. Uh, I'll like, uh, I'll have to lure them into the yard so I can trick them into befriending me. Yeah, that should be interesting. If I come back on, li on a live feed and I'm covered in like scratches and cuts, well, what happened to you? Try to kidnap a fox? Maybe not kidnap. Maybe I shouldn't try to try to kidnap wildlife. I I hear that's looked down upon. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's probably against YouTube terms of service to mention that. This video gets taken down because I said I was gonna kidnap a wild animal. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should. Yeah, maybe not. I'll reconsider. For now. Let's start. All right, I'm going to step back a bit. My voice is going to sound a little weird because I'm stepping behind the phone camera still. Hope you guys can hear me. Just stepping back to get a different view on the Fox painting. Yeah, it definitely is going to need some more highlights after this, which is fine because I was about to do that anyway. Oh, that's right. It needs to have a sharper little dog jawline. Fox jawline. I need it to be like way sharper though. It's going to come up like this and then swoop down over here. So I'm going to add the main shadow here, lighten this up underneath, and then it should look a little more believable. So that this here is going to be a bit lighter. It'll come around and hopefully, you know, look less like a, like a corgi and more like an actual fox, which is, you know, believe it or not, what it's meant to be. Little, oh, this is actually kind of darker than it was before. I must have mixed a bit of brown in with it, so I guess I'll just use it as a shadow for now. Yeah, it works as a shadow. And uh, for the bottom of its mouth, here, I'm gonna zoom in actually. Maybe that'll, uh, you guys can get a better look at it. For the bottom of its little dog mouth here, I keep calling it a dog, technically. Oh, is it? I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Uh, I try to get it as small and detailed as possible to try to really sell the realism in this piece. Oops, all right, zoom out. There we go. Yeah, I couldn't tell if I was zooming in or out. My hand was directly in front of it. Uh, yeah, so tried to really sell like the extra detail I'm putting into this than I usually do uh, by adding what was the most precarious and time-consuming part of this entire piece. A million little dots. I probably could have just used like a really spread out book. I could have used this. <laughs> I could have just used this and like been done in like five seconds, like. But I chose not to, and there was still wet paint on that. Yeah, whatever. It didn't cause that big of a, it didn't actually do anything. I could have just done that, but instead I chose to choose, or to use this, which took way longer. You know, I guess it'll add, it'll, hopefully it adds something. It would be, Kind of annoying if all that extra work was for nothing. I probably got more realism from that anyway. Let's see. Uh, in the beginning, did you use black and white paint first? Actually, oh, that's right, I did. I think I did. That was my uh, tiger painting, right? My first tiger painting. I did it on a mirror. Yeah, my first painting, besides, I guess, the watercolor paintings and, like, really early paintings that I did on YouTube anyway, first YouTube painting was in black and white. And I kind of stuck with that for a while. Um, 
My grandma actually has, I, I gave her one as a gift, a black and white picture of a tiger eye. That's probably one of the first animals that I painted ever. Because, oh, I guess the first animal I painted was an elephant, then the tiger. Let's see. Applying for art schools. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, that is so exciting that you're applying for schools. I, I, oh, for applying for our schools. I see what you mean. Uh, believe it's already that time of year. It's fun to look back on your old videos when you guys were so young. Yeah, I actually, I've been doing that recently as well. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I thought you were, um, I thought you were laughing at the idea of applying to an art school. I've had someone laugh at me for that before. Like, oh, you're an art student. Ha <laughs> ha. Like, I'm trying. Stop it. Stop picking on me. I'm sensitive. Yeah, I'm gonna paint an insulting portrait of you. You'll never know who it was. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought, but that makes more sense. I just saw art schools, lol. I didn't understand. All right. That is, yeah, I gotta let that dry. So that's pretty good for a base. After that, I'm going to add my highlights and start working on the actual white part of its face down here because you can't really tell, but that's meant to all be white. Let's see, I started at art, go for it. Well, that's actually, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. I don't know a lot of people who've gone to art school, but I hear it's a lot of fun. I see a lot of people like online, I guess that's also like what they're showing, but still, I see a lot of videos online of people going to art school and all the amazing things everyone's creating. I, I really do want to be part of that, like being able to, you know, kind of add another, uh, that was an interesting voice crack. I think it cracked deeper. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just gonna pretend that didn't happen. That was probably the worst one yet. Uh, add another, you know, interesting piece for people to look at to the art world, if you will. I really, uh, I guess my whole mission is to be able to create little characters or do my own thing and get paid for it. I think, I, yeah, I think I'm probably gonna keep selling my paintings, but I also, at the same time, will have like a job doing 3D design or something like that. Because that sounds honestly just like, it, it's, it just sounds fun. I actually went to a lecture by this guy who actually decided to do 3D art. And there's like different levels of art that you can choose. Like you can do like design for very simple things like school textbooks where it's just like clipping art together or you can like actually create the art yourself. And I think it would be better for me to actually go into that field. I think it would make more sense. Almost forgot, I need to lighten these shadows up and make that one deeper to emphasize that its jaw, this little dog jaw is sharper and actually is meant to be that of a fox. All right, right here feels good. All right, yeah, I, I think I, uh, I think I kind of have it figured out almost. Here, let's see, I missed a comment and it does not want to show it to me. Uh, let's see, I know you're going for a fox, but it actually looks like a spot on to a Shibu Inu dog. Actually, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking too. Or, or like a corgi or shibu inu. In, shi, I, all right, I don't know how to say it. Uh, but yeah, you know, it is it is a fox, but because the reference I chose was so fluffy, it does look like a different animal. I'm thinking actually, I'm definitely going to need to sharpen its jaw a little more. Because if I don't, it's just going to continue to look <laughs> like the entire... An entirely wrong species of dog or breed? No, it's 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 not it's not like a regular dog. They're not as easy to tame. Or maybe they are. I don't know. You don't see a whole lot of house foxes, like foxes that people have tamed. Or I haven't anyway. 
not in person. There. I think, so after this, I obviously I'm gonna add highlights to make it work again, but if I really emphasize the sharpness of its doggy, doggy jaw, I could probably make it into a fox again. Also, you know what I think might help? Hold on. I'm thinking that I could probably shorten its little uh, snoot snout. I call it a snoot for my dog. Uh, yeah, I gotta make it a little rounder and shorter, and I'm assuming that should make it a little more fox-like. Also, if I step back, it might also help for me to, uh, stand the ears up more. They're not done yet, but I can see. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I kind of see it. It does look like a bear. Look at the reference. Uh, yeah, that actually, that is a good, uh, <laughs> that's a good suggestion. I probably should do that. Um, you may like being a graphic designer. Yeah, actually, what did I say? 3D designer. So 3D design and graphic design. Yeah, I've, I've been considering both. They both look like, uh, I guess, really, oh, not necessarily, well, I guess they look fun. Yeah, they look like fun, but also like, it allows for some creativity unless you're like doing graphic design where it doesn't really but still you're still getting an artistic experience and to some degree you'll be able to express yourself artistically in most cases which is exactly what i want to do all right i'm going to look at the reference light i was suggested to do really quickly let's see That's where it was. I knew I lost the iPad somewhere. All right. I try to make it fluffier, but it looks like I made the ears a little too bear-like. So what I should do is bring that up here instead. I definitely can do that since it is right now, believe it or not, I know it looks like paint, but that's actually just graphite mixed with water. So I'm gonna move this ear up and same with this ear as well because that is, it, it looks quite a lot like a dog. And although I'm pretty sure foxes are a type of dog, it is not what I'm trying to draw. Okay, that's a little tall for an ear, so I'll bring it over here a little bit and shorten it. I have uh, several references that I chose to use, but for most of them, they're all in different poses, which, whoops, something fell, which you would think would help, but it does create a little bit more confusion because foxes tend to look different from one, one another from each other? No, not one and another, from each other. Jeez, I'm getting my words mixed up, mixed up a lot. Yeah, exactly like that. I must be tired. I recently did a self-portrait uh, digitally. It was interesting, but I think I'm gonna do a live feed where I actually do a portrait of a person because I don't think I ever have, you know? might be interesting for you guys to see me figuring out <laughs> what people look like. All right, so that already is starting to look more fox-esque, more fox-like. And uh, that's what I'm going for, so I think I might continue on that trend. But before I do, I, um, that still looks a bit wet. Yeah, it is. Here's fine. I'm gonna do a bit of detail on the fur in this little area here. 
And uh, for this, actually, I did choose to use some pastel. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's the area I was meaning to work on. I knew I had something to do. Uh, I did choose to use some pastels originally, so it is kind of rejecting the water in this paint pen. As most of you probably know, uh, paint pens are basically just a mixture, or basically just have a mixture of water and acrylic paint on the inside. So uh, the pastels, being oil, are not mixing well. They're mixing fine over here, but in this area, they're kind of like spitting it out, spit, <laughs> spitting it out off of the off of the canvas a little bit. It's a little annoying, but it did create an interesting texture that I chose to keep. That's actually what you should be seeing, or might be seeing, not should be, uh, in this little area here as the brown and the orange in this area is actually wax and oil pastels. Hmm. Yeah. Oil pastels are probably my favorite thing to use if I'm doing mixed media on a painting because it allows for a, a, like a really quick, you know, solution uh, for a painting anyway. Say like you notice that this area needs a little more color, but you don't want to wait for the paint to dry. You need to get onto this other area while it, and it, for me, I guess it's helpful. I paint fast-ish. Most of my paintings are faster or made faster than most. So it does help to have, you know, a quick solution or right, a quick way to uh, apply color to a canvas. Yeah, the only problem is, as I mentioned before, sometimes it has a lot of trouble mixing with water on the canvas. But you know, it's not the end of the world. I think I'll survive. I will survive. All right, so starting to look a little more like a fox. I'm gonna step back a bit. Whoops, trying. <laughs> I'll try not to knock everything over as I do. Okay, so it looks less dog-like because I pointed the ears more. Definitely. Looks a little batty. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of that curve inward because it looks a little, little, uh, a little too much like a bat. Bats have those kind of ears, not necessarily foxes. And that immediately got rid of the problem. Well, nice. I think it's looking kind of like uh, the idea of a fox. You can kind of tell it's meant to be a fox. Let's see. Uh, do you ever prep your canvas first before, or like with gosh? Um, in some cases I do. I choose to usually try to use like, say like I want a different background. That's usually the only time I do. In this case, I actually did add a little like very thin layer of gesso because the canvas, like originally, from the factory, I guess, uh, had some patches that were pretty noticeable. And this is like pretty high quality canvas that I have as well, so it was a little weird. But all I did was patch up those spots with gesso. Uh, yeah, but in most cases, I just do like a, a thin layer of whatever color I want the background to be first. And then uh, I go from there. Let's see, I missed a couple comments. I'm gonna try to look back at them. You need a thinner neck. Oh, you mean for the fox, yeah. Uh, yeah, that is, yeah, that's true actually. So the reason I do have kind of a thick neck on this little guy, I guess if I brought it in like that, how does that look? A little better. The reason I chose to make him fluffier is because the reference had a pretty young looking fox and it looked like some, it looked like someone like blow dried and like washed the dog or I guess it's not really a dog the fox and yeah up here as well I can make thinner right here most of that is pencil like from a sketch so if I brought that in a pretty decent amount and then like that 
Well, that's a little too thin. So like that. Well, that actually, I, I can kind of see. I might also want to. Where am I liking this? Maybe I should get rid of that bump here because I don't think his body would come out that far. Like the way he's sitting, you would think it would, but that's the way you would draw it if it was a dog. It already is starting to look a little more like a fox. So that was definitely a good comment. Thank you very much uh, for telling me that. Yeah, so I'll show my references. Actually, I'm not sure if I am allowed to show you because it might be like copyrighted and then I'll, it'll be like, you showed you, you showed my thing on the, on the YouTube. Yeah. All right, so that, let's see, definitely getting there. All right, so that I think definitely helped. Oops, okay, that is the second time I've ran into my, into my uh, shelf. I'll try not to do that again, but I'm probably going to. There we go. That is looking more fox-like, I definitely think. Let's see, uh, so it's easier to erase. Yeah, with a white eraser. I have, I don't have a white eraser, but I do have a pickle. I have a pickle eraser. You know, it might, it might be easier to erase this way. I'm, I'm assuming it is. Definitely easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, even better. Oh, great. I could not be clumsier. The second that camera turned on, I immediately ran into everything and then dropped everything. Actually, that's kind of true <laughs> in a sense. Um, at, even like as I was setting up the live feed, I managed to uh, very silently have one of these screws on my easel fall out and they basically hold up the entire thing. So that almost was pretty bad. Also, no idea when this happened, but apparently, oh, is when I dropped the paintbrush. Apparently, I added a little streak of paint there. Not the end of the world. Still going, no, that's a lie. I was gonna say it's still going smoothly, but it's going, and that's all that matters. That little, little, uh, detail in here, thin out that line to make it less obnoxious while I'm painting, and I can see it definitely is starting to look more like a fox and less like a Shiba Inu, is that what they're called? It does, <laughs> it still kind of looks like it. Not the end of the world, they're a cute dog anyway. It's, it was just meant to be like a very fluffy fox, and I, it turns out when you make foxes fluffy, they look just like a dog. There, let's see. Oops. Uh, I use, oh, let's see. I use Factus. What, oh, I see, white erasers protect the paper. Yeah, um, in this case, it's a canvas and I just decided to draw it with, uh, with pencil. But I do have a more like soft eraser that I should be using. I also have a giant tin of white paint that I have neglected until now. So, uh, to do what every art teacher tells you not to do. I'm using paint directly from the tin, in this case tin, um, and not mixing it at all. It's a little bit of a yellowy white, but it definitely will get the job done. I'm just trying to add a little more of a white band across its jaw, make it a little more Uniform? No, that's not the word I'm looking for. Basically make it look more like a fox. Uh, let's see. It's just white that I'm adding, but the, it's basically, eh, it's where I'm adding it to try to really emphasize, hey, see this, uh, see this suspiciously dog looking thing over here? That's a fox. You can tell because of the, well, because of the white, because of the white band on, or stripe, stripe, just fur on its uh, on its jaw. That's how you can tell. All right, I'm gonna step back a bit. It is 
looking more fox-like, that's for sure. Uh, what I'm going to do actually is down here I notice that it's looking a little too round. So I'm just going to paint over that, all of it. All the way like that. And what I'm hoping this is going to do is, and that's just pencil to make a temporary outline where I want it to emphasize the shape of the fur. What I want it to do is fix the shape of its head, make it less round. Because foxes, whoops, oh my goodness. I actually, I actually fell and said whoops. I keep trying to step back to look at the camera. There's a table here. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a different kind of YouTuber. I am one that tends to fall over a lot. Okay, yeah, that, yeah, I don't really consider myself a, a YouTuber as much as I just consider myself an artist who likes to share their work. In this, this time, anyway, I think I might pursue YouTube for, uh, for a while. Once I'm out of school, I think it would be pretty smart of me to, because that way I'll get to continue to share my art and I won't have to, uh, you know, just leave all you guys hanging. I think, um, I think I'm going to continue making videos. Well, even like while I'm in school, uh, and yeah, then I might actually have or the opportunity to paint more or to encourage myself to paint more. There, that is starting to look more like a fox. Let's see. Uh, what did my mom say? Uh, it's not, it's more butter. Butter. All right, I'm missing. I keep reading comments that I am not gonna understand and then try to understand them midstream. That's never a good idea. I keep doing it. All right, uh, that should be a good color here. I'm gonna get a bit of a brighter white because I already, or not brighter white, brighter orange since I already have the white here on my palette. Add a bit of water in there to make it less sticky. Mm. Add some detail in there. And here. Yeah. All right, so what I'm basically doing is just filling in some of this area, leaving most of it white though, because in I think there would be more white space here. Oh, where is the light source though? It seems pretty direct, I'm guessing. Maybe I, yeah, it should be fine. You know what, I think I'm, I'm actually gonna add a bit of uh, orange in here because there is some in the other piece of its little muzzle. Uh, so it would make sense for it to be in the other. Hmm. Yeah, that seems about right. Here, I'm gonna step back a bit again. Yeah, okay, I definitely appreciate your guys' comments to help me reshape the dog, the fox. And for here, I'm just making a very faint outline. Don't know why I did that actually. That was kind of just like a, not, not like a force of habit, kind of like a force of art. I felt like it. A little bit of a shadow along the edge here to draw its face out a little more as well. And what I think I'm gonna do is after, since this is drying, and it's drying pretty yellow. I'm gonna add more of the Posca white here. Actually, I'm gonna do that now because I just touched it and none of it came off on my hands. Yeah. All right, I can uh, definitely do that. Should be fine. All right. Is it still wet over here? Nope, we're fine. By adding these highlights, I really do think it's going to kind of draw more of this piece together. 
it doesn't really make sense for the white area to be as yellow as it is. So, yeah. Uh, by doing this, I think it's going to help a lot. Ooh, this might still be wet, though. No, it's, it's not wet. It's just coming off because I rubbed it too hard. Uh, I guess that means it's a little wet, but it's not the end of the world. It's not going to affect the performance of the marker uh, very much anyway. And I will get some more details in there. All right. So this is where we are now. Uh, it has been almost an hour, and I think that's a good place to end the live feed for today because today, tonight, we, me and my family are actually watching uh, Harry Potter, and I do want to join them eventually. Also, you know, I feel like it's good for me to step back and plan a little further because today I did have a lot of tweaking to do. Uh, I think if I do... Yeah, I'm definitely going to reshape the body here. I might do that now. It's still going to come out a little more than that uh, because it looks a little too... There. That seems a bit better. Uh, Abigail is giving me all the spoilers. Oh, for the, for the Harry Potter? Oh, she better not spoil it. Better not spoil it for me. I will... Actually, I think I've seen it before. Better not not really spoil it for me then. I'll be so sad. Haven't seen Harry Potter. Actually, the first time I saw the Harry Potter movies was actually when I used to go to the dentist a lot. I used to have this issue with like my uh, my teeth. I used to have like this issue where my spit was really acidic and it would cause my teeth to, to get cavities even though I brushed a lot. I don't have that issue anymore. And I didn't have a lot of sugar either, but when I did, it was like a huge issue. And uh, the dentist actually had this TV above me, which allowed me to watch like, you know, movies while she worked, which was actually really smart because like, I can imagine kids would have a lot of tendency to, to be all spazzy if they're, well, I guess spazzy is a little bit, uh, to be all, uh, how do I say this? Insane. A lot of kids are afraid of the dentist, so that probably saved her from a lot of bitings. I hear that's common in dentistry. Kids biting. Who would have thought? Help me keep calm, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I think I watched like at least four of them. At the end though, like on my last one, I just kept watching the last Harry Potter movie. I already saw it, but because I was young, I didn't care. I was like, I want to watch The Last Harry Potter again. I couldn't, yeah, it was like my favorite thing. So we are re-watching them now. Uh, it's pretty fun. So yeah, this is what we have so far. Thank you guys all very much for joining me. Here, I'm going to tilt the camera up so I can look at you all. Hopefully my hair isn't bad and I haven't been messing with it. I don't know. And I have. I have been messing with it. Thank you, guys. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys all very much for joining me. This is what we got done today. Hold on. I'm going to pull it out of the thing. I am pretty happy with it. It's looking pretty spiffy. You guys helped a lot. Thank you very much for all your suggestions. It's looking really great. Uh, and I'm going to finish this next live feed. So thank you all very much for joining. I really appreciate it. And until next time, bye. And